this is a story that is worth telling to everyone. Hollywood-esque story with first bad taste in your mouth. Uh, villain, clear villain is causing disruption to a, what's supposed to be a great party. And then in the end, the heroes prevail and you have a feel-good story and a happy end in your hands. Hi everyone, Bob is in the house. Tonight we're gonna talk about Coachella, Frank Ocean, Skrillex, Fortet, and Fred again. So as you guys know, at Coachella there are two weekends and Coachella is one of the biggest stages in the entire music industry. Uh, it's a blessing to <laughs> be, be performing at Coachella. You know, a lot of artists, uh, they are happy when they get picked to perform at Coachella. That means they made it, pretty much. And so, Frank Ocean is a headliner for Coachella, mind you, at that time. And so, uh, he agreed at the beginning to perform at Coachella, but then what happens next is shocking. So, because Frank Ocean, a guy who only released two albums, but off of two albums he became so big and famous and lovable, he has such a devoted fan base, he has everyone in his fingertips, like people are loving his music, right? And they want to see him perform finally for the first time in seven years. Um, because Blonde Era was in 2016, the last album he dropped, and then he performed, I believe he had concerts at that time, but after that he didn't have concerts at all, you know, that was the last era, so people really wanted to see him perform, and so fans finally saw the opportunity to see him live, so they wanted to see this man in person, that's why they flew out to Coachella. There were literally people who bought Coachella tickets just to see this man. There were people who were internationally flying to see this man only. And imagine the amounts of dollars you had to spend, like the thousands of dollars you had to spend. And uh, mind you, there's the conditions are not the best at Coachella. Yes, maybe uh, if you get lucky, like you, you, you can purchase hotels, right, just to stay there. But um, oftentimes you end up uh, sleeping in the camps and the tents. I'm sorry, and then the cars. You might end up sleeping in the cars as well. Conditions are not the best at Coachella, to be honest. But I have no, I have never been there. And this is what I've heard. So what happens is Frank Ocean. At first, he says. Well, I don't want to live stream uh, my performance to, uh, to the entire world. If you're now at YouTube, you can watch anytime. You can watch Coachella uh, live streams, uh, actual performances of your favorite artists for free at YouTube. So this is what they do every year. But Frank Ocean, who is the headliner of both shows, he was advertised as this megastar, like biggest event is Frank Ocean's return uh, to the stage and he was booked at the uh, to be the last person performing at 10 p.m. Uh, both nights at week one and then week two and so what happened is he had for the plan for the for weeks ahead you know there were plans to uh, have uh, at the Frank Ocean's uh, stage to have ice ring, I think it was his demand actually, he wanted to have an ice ring on the stage and uh, make uh, people skate there, you know, have a nice background when he's singing. I think it was a cool idea, but the problem was when the day came, he said, I don't want it anymore, like, I don't want the ice ring stage anymore. And this costed Coachella a lot of money. They spent uh, money on salaries for these uh, skaters. You know, they were preparing for weeks uh, for this performance. They wanted to give a memorable performance to Coachella's audience. But, you know, they at the last minute were canceled. So they 
wasted their time for weeks for, for nothing because they didn't end up performing. Uh, yes, they got paid, yes, but you know, it's still kind of, it leaves bad taste in the mouth. And so also that ice ring, it was so hard, I'm assuming to prepare and put it on that uh, stage, the Coachella stage. And then to now to remove it last minute when Frank Ocean like called them and said like I don't want to have this stage is shocking. It is just disrespectful. You don't basically care about other people's time and efforts like if you're doing this, right? And so so he did that and then to top it all off when you know the stage the ice ring was removed, the stage now was pretty much empty because Frank Ocean didn't really tell what to do and plus anyway they didn't even have time anymore to prepare anything nice right it was literally like last minute change so the stage literally was like a big screen which showed Frank Ocean right mic stand and piano that's all there was <laughs> at that stage and so to top all that off Frank Ocean arrived at 11 p.m. Not at 10 p.m. Uh, uh, at 11 p.m. So he was one hour late. And then he performed only for one hour. Uh, his stage was, I think he said was uh, one and a half hours. But uh, he said, oh guys, I have a curfew. Uh, I need to go. He left at 12. Imagine the audacity of this man. Um, instead of giving his fans who came all the way waited all these hours and years even right to be able to be here and you do them this like instead of giving them what they want instead of having fun what you do like you're a musician you're supposed to i mean i'm assuming you love this you love what you do right all he did was he showed that he didn't want to be there his performance was bad uh, he was like talking with uh, crew members for five minutes during the performance like in the middle of the performance he's like he's like wasting time five minutes talking to somebody out there you know what I mean like that's just disrespectful to other people I, I felt disrespected even if I didn't pay money or you know I was not even like uh, expecting waiting this live stream like I was disrespected <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was disrespected and offended. I, and I don't get offended often. So this was crazy. That just left such a bad taste in my mouth. Like I felt the despair. Like wow. Like the, the the magnitude of this fuckery. You know, <laughs> like the magnitude of this bullshit. Uh, I felt the despair. I'm like wow, this really happened to all these people. Um, and of course, people were disappointed and upset and frustrated. Even to me, like, it, it just left a bad taste in my mouth about Frank Ocean. I don't want to listen to his music anymore. I, I'm, I just wonder what Frank Ocean's fans are going through right now. You know, their, like, fantasies about who Frank Ocean is, their love that they that was devoted for about all these years was gone, right? And, like, now they have to, like, rethink life pretty much. <laughs> like, that's just sad. So that was the villain of our story who... <laughs> to again to top it all off uh, said that uh, I'm not gonna perform at weekend 2 so he didn't even want to appear at weekend 2 and the, and the reason for that was uh, he wanted to fool us but he, he literally thought that we we're gonna fall for it like he thinks we're that all that dumb um, that he had a ankle injury but he himself, like he was literally standing and like dancing weirdly, not in a good way, not like in a Beyonce way of performing, right? But like, doing, like he was just messing around at that time. And so to say this, like that was just double disrespect. But anyway, so who is gonna heal that despair we had from hearing this story, right? Well. <laughs> Coachella had to find a new person who's gonna perform at 10 p.m. and be the main eventer of Coachella. So who did they pick? Skrillex. 
Fred again and Forte. These three guys, they were already like performing together uh, throughout this year in 2023 in a couple of places like uh, Madison Square Garden and uh, Times Square. So they already had experience performing together and they're like friends who are just having a great time. So they, they were the opposite of what Frank Ocean was. Frank Ocean, the guy who didn't want to be there and these guys on, on the opposite side, right? These guys were treating this performance as a blessing in disguise because these guys, first of all, they didn't expect that they're gonna be performing like this. They found out about this only days before the actual performance happened. And then headline, the headliner of Coachella, you know, within the EDM genre, like usually Coachella headliners are people like with the big international like pop status, right? Like the celebrity status, like The Weeknd, Kanye West, people like that. But right now, what happened was they chose EDM, EDM guys to be headliners of Coachella. So this was a great opportunity uh, to show the whole world EDM music. I mean, of course, EDM music, dance music is popular, but you know, to even <laughs> make it more popular, uh, they made history pretty much. I, I don't know actually, I need to double check on that if it was the first time ever EDM artists headline Coachella, but let me tell you, this just doesn't happen often. Yeah, to put that in perspective. So these guys, man, it, it was so happy to see them because they literally, they literally, um, for them it's like a dream come true. When they were performing, they were smiling and like they hyping, they were hyping each other up, like they were like hugging each other, like, <laughs> <laughs> like you know, like they had a blast and they, their excitement was contagious. Everybody had such a blast, and when I was watching this, it's just like a like a good feel story, and it's good. You you got the good feel from watching this video, like something great is happening, and. Uh, not only that, like, there was an Instagram story Fortet posted that day of performance, um, just a couple hours before the actual performance, he was saying like, hey look, like, he's doing an Instagram story and he's saying like, hey look, uh, it's the Coachella stage, we're gonna be there uh, soon. Imagine, like, how crazy it will be, like, this is a dream come true, um, we're gonna be walking that aisle, you know, three of us, we're gonna be standing at that stage, right? And then when they were actually there at that stage, started to walk on that aisle, Fred again decided to make a surprise for um, Fortet. Uh, Fred again asked the crew members to uh, show the Instagram story at the screen and Fortet I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like, uh, he was so surprised, you know, that, uh, you know, Fred again showed the story, I was like, oh, damn it, <laughs> like, that was so good, because he is saying this stuff, and they're, they're literally at the stage, they're doing this, they're walking at the aisle, and they're walking, like, in such a cool fashion now, like, <laughs> hangover style, you know, like, hangover of the movie, uh, and so, like, uh, and then they they walked towards their DJ sets, and then they created a banger. Uh, the music was so amazing and eargasmic. I'm, I I was I kept Shazamming songs from there. There were times when Shazam didn't discover, couldn't recognize the songs because it was all remixed and like mash up. But then I literally went and s saw the set list and like I was like adding those songs to my playlists and like. Um, let me tell you that oh 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 also the ice ring that frank ocean decided to like sort of throw it away remove it um they brought it back like they took that ice ring and um, created a stage on that ice ring so ice ring was there like a circle and people were like surrounding them surrounding that circle and that stage was there skrillex Fortet and um Fred again, they were um, standing on that stage, performing on that stage, on that ice ring. So they they utilized what Frank Ocean threw away pretty much, right? So that was like just crazy. Like this is like 
Hollywood-esque story when you have oh, despair but now ooh, <laughs> and then a happy ending, right? So it was really, really great. And I, uh, that that said, I after hearing the story, I watched the Coachella set and I was blown away by how creative they are and what kind of great music they played. Uh, side note, I don't know why there's police sirens all the time now. <laughs> uh, it usually doesn't happen like that. Uh, I live in a pretty calm city, <laughs> San Diego, but uh, let me tell you, like that, this set made me want to uh, go out, practice my DJ skills and become a DJ and perform at the parties of San Diego <laughs> in the nightclubs, you know? Like that literally made me take my old DJ, um, all dusty DJ player <laughs> I made like this <laughs> I haven't seen you in a couple of years <laughs> and uh, literally made me practice my DJ skills again I uh, I the songs that I took and downloaded from that set I put it uh, onto that onto the my DJ mix and like I started to mix the songs together uh, mix songs uh, from that set with the other songs uh, that I know. I myself also had a great time yesterday. <laughs> I sort of invited my cousin and um, who he didn't have any experience on DJing. I just showed him like what to do. Uh, in, in five minutes he was like okay like <laughs> and uh, we had such a great time together. It was my first time like actually mixing songs r real time uh, with somebody else and um, I saw I would, I kind of felt what Skrillex and Fred again was feeling at the Coachella. Of course, they were like performing to everyone, so that's why the, the moment, the legendary moment, and you know, sharing this excitement with everyone. Of course, like Fred again was also smiling so much, like he was so happy, like laughing, and you know, taking it all in. Of course, that feeling is like X100 towards what I felt, but I was, I also felt happiness and joy when I was mixing uh, with my cousin so um, and you and we all just want to be happy you know in this world so uh, it, those moments are priceless crazy and we had really fun time with my cousin too like like when then the transition was so smooth and well like oh. <laughs> you know like so it was really fun we did just like what Skrillex and Fred again did, you know, when they were performing. I had to move from uh, the place I was sitting earlier because the sun was covering my face, uh, not in a good way. And uh, there was a visual issue for the majority of the video. And that's upsetting because I'm recording this video for the second time now. And the first time uh, I had a different issue. And now I had this issue and uh, um, I wanted to make this video really good, uh, but unfortunately there will be a visual issue, but hopefully when you were watching it, it wasn't uh, too bad. Um, gladly you were at least able to hear me, so which is good. Uh, but uh, I moved to this spot uh, where I have my DJ, let's just say DJ player. I wanted to say that um, this Coachella set made me inspired and also made me want to react to Skrillex's new album, which came out in February. I actually already listened to this album and when it came out, I really wanted to check it out. I mean, react to it on camera, but I uh, wasn't able to for various reasons. And, um, but now I feel like it's the time, you know, with this hype uh, of Coachella said with this story uh, and, um, you know, me, I mean, already knowing the songs, yes, uh, but I don't remember every single one of the songs that I heard from that album because I didn't come back to it that often. And so, um, but with knowing <laughs> some of the songs, especially from the uh, track list, from the set list, um, I think it's going to be a fun time to uh, come back to that album, react to it on camera, uh, and just have fun with you guys. So we, we haven't had fun in a while together so I really want to have fun with you guys and um, let's just make it happen let's just make shit happen in 2023 I want to direct you to Skrillex uh, reaction video if it's already posted you will be able to see it here but if you have any questions please uh, leave in the comments below like uh, your questions 
um, regarding me or regarding what I've been doing in 2023, uh, regarding like <laughs> what, what was that house, right? Like uh, things like that. Uh, or if you have any recommendations, what to check out uh, when it comes to songs from Fortet, uh, Skrillex, Fred again, you can do that as well. Uh, or anything comes to your mind, please let me know in the comments. I read them all and uh, reply to them. So thank you very much for watching this video. I would highly advise to watch Coachella set I've been talking about. I'll uh, link to that as well uh, here. And um, I will see you guys in the next ones. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel. And yeah, I'll see you uh, in that next video with Skrillex. Have a good one.